Do you want to learn how to use Grammarly? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins. Welcome to the Become a Writer Today channel. So I've been a Grammarly customer since 2013 or 2014. It's a key tool that I consider part of my writing and publishing workflow. Grammarly is an exceptional tool which will help you improve your English writing skills, write with confidence and press publish or submit much easier. So in this in-depth Grammarly tutorial, I'm gonna cover how you can set Grammarly up, what version of Grammarly is right for you and explain how some of its key features work. And I'll also talk about how Grammarly can help you improve your English writing skills and talk about some of the hidden features inside of Grammarly which you may not necessarily know about, including some new ones that they've just rolled out. Hope you enjoy the content in this detailed Grammarly tutorial. If you do, hit thumbs up. And if you wanna get more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So what should you use Grammarly for? Well, it's particularly good for checking your emails, for checking your social media posts, for editing your blog posts or articles if you're a freelance writer. If you're a professional, it's great for getting your business proposals ready before you send them around to team members. It also works quite good for presentations. You can use it to copy edit some of your stories or for your nonfiction, which is what I've done. You can even use it to check book chapters and I'll give you some tips for that later on in the video. Basically, you can use Grammarly to grammar check and to improve the quality of any type of writing, whether it's on your computer, your tablet, your smartphone, or online. Grammarly typically is free to use for most writers. So you can use it to check for grammar errors, spelling errors, punctuation issues, and other issues in your writing that you want to fix without paying anything. You can do almost everything that I'm gonna show you in this video. However, if you want some context behind your grammar errors, if you want to use the AI powered writing assistant, if you want some help with word choice, and if you also need help managing citations and so on, you will need to take out a premium subscription. Now prices do vary depending on what promotion Grammarly is running. It's currently $30 per month. However, I do have a Grammarly uh, deal or discounts that you can avail of that is an affiliate link, meaning you're earning a small commission. And I'll put a link to that in the notes below this video. Now Grammarly business, which is outside of the scope of this tutorial, is built on a per seat basis. And this is particularly useful if you want to uh, use Grammarly within your company, give team members in your business secure access and create a custom style guide for your business. But I may record a separate tutorial about Grammarly business, so do watch out for that. But suffice to say, if you're a new writer and you're starting out, the Grammarly free version is perfectly fine. It will help you find and fix more errors than a traditional grammar or spelling checker. And there is a detailed table that goes into more details uh, about the differences between free and premium. The premium version is particularly good if you write a lot, if you write for a living, or if you make money through writing, or perhaps if you want to uh, just improve your professional writing skills. In other words, if writing is part of your job, or perhaps you just want more confidence writing in English. I started out with the pre version all the way back in 2013. Since then, I upgraded to the premium version and now I use Grammarly Business. It's pretty easy to set up your Grammarly account. The first thing you're going to want to do is to sign up for Grammarly with your best Google, Facebook, Apple, or personal email address. Now you can take out the free version of Grammarly to complete the steps that I'm about to show you. And then when you're ready, you can upgrade to the premium version. So once you've done that, you will log into the web app on Grammarly. So that's app.grammarly.com. And if you visit the apps section of the web app, it will give you a link to Grammarly for Mac, which you can install. You can see I've already installed it, but I'll walk you through the steps in a moment. You can also download it for Chrome and Grammarly for iPhone and iPad and also for Android. So this is the easiest way to find all of the links for all of your different devices. Worth pointing out that I'm recording this tutorial on a Mac. So I won't be able to download Grammarly for Windows, but the steps are pretty similar. Just log into the apps section of Grammarly and you should see a prompt to download it for Windows. Or if for some reason you don't, just visit grammarly.com forward slash desktop forward slash Windows and there'll be a button here that you can click to download the Windows app. A lot of writers enjoy using Google Docs for lots of different reasons. I consider myself one of them. If you want to set up Grammarly and Google Docs, just visit grammarly.com forward slash Google dash docs. Or alternatively, you can just search for Grammarly on the Chrome Web Store. If you are going to install it, make sure you install the official version of Grammarly because there are some other apps that claim to be Grammarly, but they're not actually from the company. Then once you've done that, you can use it in Google Docs and I'll show you that in a few moments. 
A lot of new Grammarly users wonder how they can install the plugins or add-ons for Word, for Excel, PowerPoint, and for their writing apps of choice. Well, good news, when you install Grammarly for Mac or Windows, it's gonna work across all of your applications on your computer, not just specific ones like the Microsoft Office 365 suite. So let me show you. So I'm gonna open up Grammarly desktop uh, for Mac, and it'll present me with this prompt, and it's the exact same on Windows. And this prompt basically signals that Grammarly is up and running on the background on my computer. So I can create a new document and it will take me into the web app in Grammarly, or I can open up a writing application on my computer and I will be able to check it for writing errors with Grammarly. So to show you what I mean, I'm going to open up Ulysses firstly, which is a writing app that I use on Mac. So this is an article that I wrote some time ago uh, about how to decide what to work on next. It has a number of grammar errors, uh, which I'm gonna work through for the purposes of this tutorial. But you'll notice there's an icon hovering here with 27. So this particular icon is actually the Grammarly icon. Sometimes you'll see a G depending on where you're using Grammarly. And when I'm checking this article for grammar and spelling errors, all I have to do is click on this icon and then I'll immediately get suggestions from Grammarly about what to find and fix. To show you how this works across all of my writing apps, I've opened up the desktop version of Word. I'm gonna paste in the exact same article and you can see that the Grammarly icon is hovering and when I click on this, I can immediately access all the grammar and spelling errors. Now I know it can be a little bit confusing to uh, work on an article and also to you know, be asked to fix grammar and spelling errors at the same time. So if you find this distracting, don't worry. Simply just click on the Grammarly icon, then click on the cog and you can disable it in the specific writing application completely. And then when you want to reactivate it, just open up Grammarly again, or you can just turn it off for 30 minutes. So I actually recommend turning it off for 30 minutes because that's normally enough time to, you know, work on a draft of your writing or your email or whatever it is that you're working on and then find and fix it for errors. And then when you are ready to check it, just simply open back up Grammarly. You can also access the settings section in Grammarly, and I recommend you do this once you've installed it on your computer. So what you're going to do here is signify whether you're writing American, British, Canadian, or Australian English. Because there are differences in spellings between whether you use American, British, Canadian, and Australian English. So for example, in the United States, you might say, I realize I or E A L I Z E. I need to learn more about grammar. Whereas in the United Kingdom, that's spelled with an S, R-E-A-L-I-S-E. -E. Now you can also make changes to writing style as well and configure if you want Grammarly to launch uh, at startup. But that's basically how you set up Grammarly to work on your computer. You can also make changes directly in your Grammarly app on your web browser. Just simply open up a Grammarly document, click on the hamburger menu and select your relevant language preferences. Currently it's set to American English but I've put in some words that are written with British English and Grammarly has flagged these as using the non-American variant and has suggested changes for me. So how can you set up Grammarly keyboard so you can use it across your mobile devices? Well, the easiest way to do it is simply to open up the App Store or the Play Store on your mobile device. And then you're gonna search for Grammarly and then the keyboard app should pop right up. Once you've downloaded the official Grammarly app, you're simply going to open it up and then you'll be asked to configure a couple of different settings inside of it. So it works across all of your mobile devices. So you're gonna just navigate through the on-screen tutorial, which explains how Grammarly works, which is what we're also doing in this video. And then you're gonna log into your Grammarly uh, account uh, using the same email address that you used to set up your previous account. Next, you'll be prompted to add Grammarly keyboards to your device. So simply click on the green button, click on keyboards, and then you'll see an option to turn on Grammarly and make sure you give it full access and then click allow. Then navigate back to the Grammarly app and then you should be ready to use uh, Grammarly once you hold down this icon here and then you can switch to the Grammarly keyboard. Now you can open up any writing application on your mobile device or any social media app right away as normal, but then access Grammarly. So to show you what I mean, I'm gonna go to the Grammarly editor uh, firstly, so I can actually write documents directly on my mobile app or even on my tablet. So I'm just gonna open up a demo document that I have here. And you can see here that I can click on any of these to see the usual tool tips and recommendations from Grammarly. However, to show you how the keyboard works across all of my apps, I'm gonna open up Apple Notes. Now I'm going to open up a note at random and I'm gonna type in a sentence with a grammar mistake. I click on the G icon, it'll give me an option to check my text for potential errors and give me some suggestions that I can fix. 
Now, obviously, these suggestions will be predicated based on whether I have the free or premium version of Grammarly. But in summary, once you have the Grammarly keyboard set up on your mobile device, you can automatically find and fix errors much easier. Now that you've set up Grammarly, it's time to use it to find and fix errors in your work. So you can do this using the desktop app, which is my preferred workflow. Or you can also do it using the plugin for Chrome, which I'll show you in a few moments. But for the purposes of simplicity, I'm going to use the web app, which is at app.grammarly.com. Now I can simply upload a file from my computer, or I can copy and paste text into the Grammarly web app. I find it's just quicker to copy and paste text in. I sometimes get asked by writers how many words they can check at once in Grammarly, and could they use it to check an entire book? Well, there are some limitations that you should know about. So basically, in any 30-day period, you can check up to 300 documents or 150,000 words. Now, in all my years using Grammarly, I have never hit this limitation, and I use it to check my writing and writing by other team members. In a 24-hour period, you can also check 100 documents or 50,000 words. So for context, a non-fiction book averages between 50 and 70,000 words, and a novel may average around 100,000 words. Now, I have noticed that if you do paste in a lengthy document into Grammarly, say 10 or 15,000 words, the grammar checker can slow down a little bit. So what I recommend you do if you want to check long form writing is to check individual chapters rather than checking the entirety of your book. Anyway, you're gonna find it really difficult to work through grammar errors for an entire book in one grammar editing session. So if you paste in a chapter that's a thousand or 2000 words long, you can use Grammarly as normal. Or alternatively, you can just use the desktop app like I showed you previously. Uh, there is a demo document that Grammarly has provided. So I'm gonna use this firstly to show you how you can use Grammarly. So when I click on a demo document, and this will be the same for your writing, there's a number of different options for me to look at. First up is the overall score. So this provides information about how many characters, words, and sentences are in my document. So if you have a set word count, this is what you're going to look at. It'll also give me some information about speaking time. Last year, I narrated an audiobook and I used the speaking time report to gauge how long it would take me to narrate specific chapters from my book. So this is something Grammarly was able to help with. Now, I also like the readability score. So generally, you're going to want a readability score that's as high as possible. That's because it'll make it easier for your readers to understand what you want to say. That said, it's really hard to get a readability score above 80 or 90. So I would aim for something that's at least above 60 or potentially above 70. If you run into issues, try and reduce complicated language, simplify your words and break up your sentences and introduce formatting. Now, don't worry too much about it when you start working on your documents. Just work through Grammarly's suggestions and you'll find your readability score naturally goes up. Uh, if you're interested, you can also download a PDF report as well if you do want to send this to another writer. The next thing you're going to want to do is to open up the goals section. Now again, don't spend too much time second guessing what goals to pick. Normally it's fine to simply select uh, general and inform and knowledgeable and neutral. However, if you do change some of these goals, it does make some differences in the number of errors Grammarly will surface around clarity and delivery. So if you're writing something that's academic or technical, uh, I would recommend changing this to formal and to academic. And then once you've done that, you can actually check your preferred citation style, and this will help you with managing citations in your documents. But don't spend too much time worrying about goals at the start of the grammar checking process. Instead, just simply start using Grammarly. And what I recommend you do, and this is what I do, is work through each of these reports individually rather than all at once. So firstly, or firstly, I would select correctness, and this is gonna show you the critical grammar and spelling errors that you need to fix. So you can see here it's flagged misspellings, it's flagged effect, and it's flagged commas as potential grammar errors that I need to review. Now here's a key difference between the free version and the premium version of Grammarly. So with the premium version, I can click on learn more and it'll give me some additional context and information about why I may potentially want to remove this comma, as well as some examples. So if you need a little bit more confidence writing in English or you want to improve your English grammar skills, then this can be used or this can be quite helpful uh, for you. So what I recommend you do is simply work through these changes one by one, deciding uh, what you want to accept or reject. Some of the changes you of course will have to make manually. So in this case, I can just simply click it to accept the change and I can click this one to accept the change as well. It's also prompted me to use consistent punctuation throughout the document. And this is why I like Grammarly. You can make changes uh, quite quickly by clicking on update all. 
And doing this, it'll help me get something that's ready to publish or submit much easier. Now, if I have a bit more time and I'm a bit more concerned about the quality of my work or copy editing, then I'll spend some time on these additional reports. So the next one I'm going to want to look at is clarity. This is where it's, I'm trying to make my writing easier to understand. <clears throat> so it's highlighted some difficult uh, sentences in blue that I may potentially want to revise. So in this case, the sentence says, Grammarly has spotted a sentence that is unnecessarily wordy. It will be clearer to rework the sentence and I can do this at a click in Grammarly like this. Here's another example. There's an unnecessary uh, or redundant uh, word that I can use and I can simply click on this uh, to remove it. So again, I'll work through the clarity suggestions one by one, but this is where you need to make a decision as the writer or editor. Not all of these changes will make sense or will apply depending on your piece or your audience. So they're meant as suggestions rather than prescriptions. So you're probably gonna accept most of the correctness changes, but when it comes to clarity, you need to make the choice. Now next up, you're gonna look at the engagement report. This is ideal if you want to make your writing a bit more colorful or positive. And to do this, you just simply click on this report here and it will underline uh, specific words in green. Grammarly Premium can give you very helpful feedback. So Grammarly is suggesting that I should change this to constructive. It will inspect your vocabulary carefully. It will scrutinize your vocabulary. So it's giving me better words that I can use for this specific document. Next, you're going to look at the delivery section. So this will basically highlight uh, words in your document and explain the impression that these will make on readers. This is where you'll find information about the Grammarly tone detector, for example. So it'll sometimes give me emojis, which will help me figure out uh, what the tone is. It can even help you when you wanna refine your slang or formality level. So in this case, it's given me some options uh, about how I can make this sentence sound, firstly, more formal based on my writing goals, and secondly, uh, more confident. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept this. So the, it's these two reports here that are affected most by the goals that you're gonna set uh, inside of Grammarly. And finally, uh, you also have a style guide report which relates to Grammarly business. Now, I'm not going to go into detail too much about Grammarly business uh, in this specific tutorial. The workflow is pretty similar if you're using Grammarly on a different application on your computer or even in Microsoft Word. The only difference is you're going to just click on the Grammarly icon to trigger it, and then you're going to work through each of these suggestions. But in this case, because you don't have access to the sidebar, you're going to click on the right arrow to work through them uh, one by one. Now it is worth pointing out that sometimes uh, you will need to you know, click on the eye icon to get more context uh, about the different suggestions. But do pay attention to uh, the heading above each of the suggestions because it will tell you whether it's clarity, that is in blue, whether it's for correctness, that is in red. So do focus on the red errors first before you move on to the blue ones. Now the other thing that you can do if you're writing a document and you're using specific words or terms that Grammarly flags as an error, but which you know are not an error, you can add them to your Grammarly custom dictionary. So here's a word here that uh, appears in this specific document, which is about a cryptocurrency uh, wallet. So it's about a network related to the blockchain. So I know, that, I know that this is correct. So I'm simply gonna click add to dictionary and then it'll be no longer flagged as an error by Grammarly. Now I know that's a specific or edge use case, but let's say you're a fiction writer and you're using unusual character names, descriptions, spells, locations, or anything that doesn't normally appear in the dictionary. Well then take a few moments to add these into your Grammarly custom dictionary. I guarantee it will save you a lot of time. You can also add words to your custom dictionary by going to your admin panel on the Grammarly web app. So once you go to the admin panel, your version may look a little bit different to mine depending on what version of Grammarly you have, but you're looking for the customize section. And here you can start adding custom words into your dictionary or deleting words that are already there. So put your unusual character names, descriptions, and weird words in here so Grammarly doesn't flag them. And then you can also make some changes to the language settings of Grammarly as well. Now, while we're in here, I also wanted to show you the writing style section of Grammarly. And this is where you configure uh, the errors that, and suggestions that Grammarly surfaces versus ignores. Usually I would just leave all of these turned on. But if you find that some of the Grammarly suggestions aren't relevant to you, then you can turn some of these off. Uh, so here's one example uh, of something that I might turn off is to use a space between the time AM and PM. So some style guides would say you should not have a full stop between AM and PM. So if I turn this off, this will no longer be flagged as an error. Uh, you can also uh, set rules around the Oxford comma. There's a lot of debate about whether the Oxford comma 
is good to use or not. Depending on what side of that debate you fall, you can turn this on or off. Now, personally, I wouldn't worry too much about all of these rules. I would only go in here if you find something that's repeatedly appearing in Grammarly that's annoying you that you want to turn off. As an example of how you can use this, one annoyance that I have with Grammarly is that it regularly tells me that I need to change my straight apostrophes to curly apostrophes. And it's always the first error that pops up in my document. But this isn't really relevant to me because I paste this text in to a content management system, WordPress, that automatically changes these uh, issues. So I could, if this was really annoying me, I could go back to the account section of Grammarly and I could just simply search for the apostrophe rule and then I can just turn this off. Now, if I go back over to this uh, specific document and I just click reload, it will no longer be flagged as something that I need to fix. So this is how you can, uh, you know, avoid some of the annoyances that you may find in Grammarly or customize it to your writing style or preferred workflow. If you want to use Grammarly in Google Docs, based on the steps that I showed you earlier on in the video. Once you've installed it, you will be presented with this tooltip to take a tour of how Grammarly works. Now again, it's pretty easy. Uh, Grammarly works the exact same as it did or does in the desktop app and also in the web app. You'll simply see the Grammarly icon here, click on this, and then a sidebar will appear where you can review all of these suggestions. Now, in this case, the correctness report, uh, clarity and engagement reports are up the top, but they're still underlined in red, blue, green, and purple. So again, you're gonna work through all of these suggestions one by one. And of course, if you wanna turn this off, you can just simply click on the Grammarly icon again. You can also use Grammarly to check your emails for spelling and grammar errors and other issues. So you can install the plugin, but I find it works best if you have the desktop app working on your computer, because then you can just access the floating Grammarly icon in your email. So I've pasted in some text here, and you can see here that I can simply click on this to work through potential issues uh, in this email before I send it to somebody. And again, you can do the exact same with any web app. So it could be Slack, it could be Twitter, it could be Facebook, or wherever it is that you're writing online. Grammarly has also rolled out a new beta feature for managing your citations. It's a real time saver if you write a lot of research papers or nonfiction. Now the feature is in beta, so it only works on some journals online like PubMed and also on some sites like Wikipedia, but I would expect support to improve over time. If the site you're looking at is supported, simply click on uh, the floating get citation button and Grammarly will give you a citation for APA, MLA or Chicago that you can paste into your uh, writing app. Or alternatively, you can actually get an in-text citation uh, by clicking on the uh, ellipsis and then you can copy the in-text citation into your document as well. If you find yourself on a page that you need to create a citation for, but the citation manager isn't working just yet, just visit grammarly.com forward slash citations and you can paste in all of the details manually and then Grammarly will give you a formatted citation that you can paste into your document or whatever it is you're working on. One of my favorite features is the AI powered writing assistant in Grammarly. Suffice to say, this is a Grammarly premium feature only, but basically it enables full sentence rewrites and it enables uh, suggestions that you can accept or reject in bulk. So you can see here on the right hand side, Grammarly has given me seven suggestions at once that I can accept or reject by clicking on the trash button. Now on first glance, all of these suggestions make sense. So I will simply select accept all. This is a real time saver for editing. As much as I love this feature, it's actually the full sentence rewrites that I find is even better. So to identify these, uh, simply click on the uh, clarity report. And now you can click on individual sentences inside of Grammarly that you can rewrite at a click. So here's an example here. I earns my first, did you spot the grammar error? $100 online accidentally by writing a review of lynda.com. Grammarly has suggested I accidentally earned my first $100 online by writing a review of, and then I can rewrite this for clarity at a click. Let me find you another example. Four examples, another error. I rely on Grammarly almost every day to edit freelance writer's work for my sites. So I can change this to, for example, I rely on Grammarly almost daily to uh, rewrite or to edit freelance writer's work for my sites. So it's a real time saver if I want to write something that's more concise and more clear. And I haven't found anything like this in any of the other grammar checkers and writing tools that I've tried. Now, of course, as the writer, it's your job to decide if these suggestions, because they are suggestions, make sense for you and for your readers. Because you don't want to let any grammar checker or writing tool take the personality out of your work. But I find that usually these suggestions 
do give me some feedback and information about what I should improve upon. They will help me increase my readability score and also increase the overall score uh, for my document. And it is a real time saver during the self-editing process. Now that said, it works particularly well for non-fiction, for blog posts, professional writing, emails, and so on. But if you're writing something that's a bit more creative, for example, a short story or poetry or a novel, then you're probably not going to use these quite as much. Once you've grammar checked and fixed up your writing, the final step is to use a Grammarly premium feature. It's the plagiarism checker. And of course, it's available only in a premium version of Grammarly. I use the plagiarism checker regularly because I work with freelance writers. I use it as part of my hiring and vetting process and also to avoid issues where perhaps there's a missing citation or a link in an article that somebody has submitted to the sites that I run. Similarly, I also use the plagiarism checker when I've written something, but I've forgotten the original source or link. It's pretty easy to use. So I have here an article that appears on my site. When I click on the plagiarism checker, it takes a few minutes to scan it against billions of web pages online. Now, the caveat is that the content must be freely accessible, i.e. not a research paper or a piece of gated content or something that's in a book. However, you don't have to buy any additional credits to use it, unlike other plagiarism checkers. It comes bundled as part of your monthly premium subscription. So once it's completed the scan, it will score your work with a percentage score. So if you see something that's between five and 10%, chances are it's okay because you could be using a product name or a quote or something that's commonly used online. But if you see a higher plagiarism score, then you should go and investigate. And you can do that by clicking through the relevant sections that Grammarly has flagged as potential plagiarism. So what it will give you is the original link that you can go and inspect. Now, this is an article that appears on my site, so I know that this article hasn't been plagiarized. But fun fact, a couple of months ago, I pasted in a different article into my site and I was shocked to find that another content website had plagiarized or taken my article almost verbatim, published it on their site under their own name without asking permission. So I immediately initiated a DMCA takedown request. Now, if you're an academic, you may need a specialist plagiarism checker. However, if you're a writer working online or if you work a, in a professional context and you're concerned about plagiarism, then it only takes you know, an extra minute or two to run the plagiarism report and it could save you from embarrassment or it could save you from potential issues down the road. Currently has also recently rolled out a tone detector, which is particularly useful for professionals who want to figure out what type of impression they're making on readers. It's pretty easy to access. Just simply open up Grammarly as you would normally. Now look for the emoji that appears on the top of the tool tip. And this is basically an at a glance insight into how your writing sounds. So in this case, my writing sounds joyful and confident. But if I had written something that was negative, what would happen? I wrote something that was negative. How will the tone detector work? Well, I've pasted in some text here. I hate the way our company handles customer support. Now, if I open up Grammarly as normal, it's suggesting that I should be a little bit more diplomatic and change this to, I wouldn't say I like the way our company handles customer support. So if you are worried about how people are going to perceive or take up your writing or what you're saying in the written word, then use the tone detector to make changes and edits accordingly. I consider Grammarly a key tool in my toolbox. I use it to edit my articles and articles by other freelance writers. It helps me find and fix grammar errors and also improve the readability of something that I'm gonna publish or submit online. If you're ready to try Grammarly, I recommend starting with the free version so you can get a feel for how it works. When you're ready to upgrade to the premium version, it'll cost you approximately $30 per month, but I do have a discount which you can use uh, in the notes section below this video. That is an affiliate link, meaning to earn a small commission. You could take out a subscription of Grammarly for a once-off project and cancel when you're done. Or if you're like me, you could, could continue to use Grammarly to edit your writing and your professional works. So I hope you enjoyed this in-depth Grammarly tutorial. If there are any more features or tools you'd like to learn about pertaining to Grammarly, please let me know in the comment section. And of course, if you have questions about Grammarly, please also ask and I'll get back if I can. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos just like this.